So welcome for a physics lesson. We are going to study a form for topic called forward thinking. Floating thinking. So in this case, <coughs> we are going to look the reason why bodies float and uh, the laws and principles governing floating and sinking which are only two laws. The Archimedes principle and the law of rotation. The law of rotation. Therefore, we are going to study these two laws and we are just going to start with an example of what we call Archimedes principle just before we define what it states therefore it is good we, we do a demo though I'm just going to illustrate <coughs> later on during your own time you can organize and have the practical done but to, to, to just verify Archimedes principle we, we can do an experiment whereby we determine the, the real weight of an object. The real weight in brackets is weight, weight in air. Therefore, we can have a, a spring balance. Spring balance hung here. Then we have a solid hang on it. Certain solids. So these are solids whose mass is to be determined. These are spring balance. A spring balance. Therefore, from this one, we can record weight one. The body has in air. Then we try to sink this body in a liquid, for example, water. So when we get the same, same, the same, same setup, spring balance, then we have now this solid dipped in a liquid, for example, water. For example, water. And we record weight 2 when it is in water. This is weight 2 when it is partially immersed. You realize that when this solid is inside water, it is weighing less. It is weighing less. And therefore, it is good to realize that whenever an object is inside a liquid, it experiences an upward force and that force we call it up thrust. When we try to sink it fully or to immerse it fully such that now the whole body has sunk in water, we record another weight which is lesser. Hmm? Say that weight 1 is greater than weight 2. So when it is in the liquid, it weighs less. Because the liquid offers an upward force in this solid, and that upward force is called upthrust. How we can determine upthrust? We can use what we call a, the Eureka can setup. We are by this solid. We dip it in a Eureka can. In a Eureka can. This is a Eureka can. A Eureka can. Such that now, when the leap of flows, so we can dip it well. Remember, water is going to overflow. If this is water. going to work. 
block and we record the water here. Water. Such that the displaced water can be recorded. So when we determine <coughs> the mass of this water which has been displaced, its weight, <coughs> you realize that the difference in weight between the real weight and the apparent weight is equal to the water which has been displaced. And this one is what we are calling apparent. Therefore, we can say, we can talk of, <coughs> we can talk of, when we take real weight, and we subtract the apparent weight, the weight now, which the liquid weighs because it has sunk in water, you find that weight is becoming less experiencing upwards. Therefore, when we subtract these two weights, then we get what we are calling upwards. Upwards. In other words, weight in air minus weight when it has been immersed in water equals to upwards. Therefore, <coughs> there is that difference in weight. It is brought about by upwards. It is brought about by upwards. Therefore, <coughs> this is what you realize. Whether the body is fully immersed or partially immersed, it weighs less. And it is weighing less because there is an upthrust it is experiencing. Now, practically, when you do this one demonstration, you realize that difference in weight, which we are calling up, will be equal to the weight of the fluid which the body displaces. In other words, uh, this observation is means uh, where we get a law, <clears throat> where we get a law, and this law, this law says that the Archimedes principle, Archimedes principle, which states that a body experiences when passion or fully immersed instead of immersed you can use the word submerged in a fluid it experiences it experiences we know very well, <coughs> because the body has been immersed in a fluid, then it will displace the fluid. And of course, a volume equal to itself, as long as the body does and does not react with the fluid where it has been immersed. It is good to master that we use the word fluid. Because of many experiments which are done using water, students tend to confuse and say that when a body is fully or partially Experiences an upthrust which is equal to the weight of the water displaced. Uh, that is a mistake. It is not all through when we use water. Therefore, it's good to know that this happens with all the fluids, even gases, because fluids are generally gases and liquids. <clears throat> when we immerse a body in a fluid, this body displaces the fluid. When the fluid has been displaced, it has some mass, the displaced one. It has some mass. That mass equals to the weight of the fluid displaced. So that is why we are summing up 
That's why we are summing up and say up thrust. Up thrust should always be calculated using the weights of fluid displaced. The weights of the fluid displaced. That is why we are saying when we get real weights in air and we subtract apparent weights when weight is in water we get up thrust therefore the weights are different because of up thrust so difference between real weight and apparent weight is brought about by up thrust so we shall continue from there thank you for following kindly Shifting rates and share this link with your friends. I'll be delivering examples <coughs> very soon on calculations involving Archimedes principle and half thrust. In other words, half thrust is a force which can be defined as the upward experience or the upward force experienced by bodies when immersed in fluids. This is to show that without a fluid, others will not be experienced. So thank you for following. Kindly subscribe and share the link.